I've been held by a savior I fell afire from above I've been down to the river I ain't the same A prodigal return All my hope is in Jesus Thank God that yesterday's gone And all my sins are forgiven been freed and forgiven I'm not going back I'll never be the same to watch that all my hope is in Jesus thank God yesterday There's a kind of thing that just breaks a man Breaking down to his knees God, I've been broken more than a time or two Yes, Lord, didn't he pick me up? And show me what it means to be a man Come on and sing All my hope is in Jesus Thank God my yesterday's gone Yes, Lord, my sins are forgiven wonder where Haggai's at, if you'll go to the Old Testament, to Zechariah, the last book, or Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, and then start turning back, and you'll find Malachi, then you'll find Zechariah, and then you will find Haggai. So, Haggai. So, just, uh, we, we want to preach this morning from uh, the first uh, chapter of Haggai, and we might have a, a, a verse or two over in chapter two, but we want to preach this morning on the subject of uh, why delay finishing the work when we've all got unfinished work to do in this life. And it, the story of Haggai has to do with the unfinished work that was going on in Jerusalem. Now if I can give you just a little bit of history. As to how this book came about. And to, uh, to the, what extent uh, that this book is teaching us. Now 
This is a period of time when uh, the two tribes of Israel, Benjamin and Judah, who were the royal line, Judah was, and they were left in Jerusalem. This does not involve the other ten tribes that was in Samaria, but this involves the, uh, the two tribes there in Jerusalem. Well, as you know, that they were taken in captivity for some uh, 70 years there in Babylon. And while they were there in Babylon, though, and while they were in captivity, we know that uh, not only did the, the Babylonians uh, uh, keep hold them prisoner, but we know that the, Med the Medes and the Persians, which was today Iran, they uh, defeated the Babylonians and they took over and held Israel prisoner or these two tribes. We may call them Israel, but they are the two tribes. And then we know that the Greeks under Alexander the Great came along and, and they, uh, they took over and they held them prisoner. And then we know that also next the Romans came along and held them prisoner. And even unto the day that Jesus came on the scene in Jerusalem, the Jewish people was still under the Roman rule at this time. But to take us back now as to what happened at the end of the 70 year period. At the end of this period, we know that the, a group of the Jewish people came back to Jerusalem. The number was some 50,000 people that came back. We know that they came back under the leadership of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was about building the gates and the repairing the walls that went around Jerusalem. And then we know that Ezra was another one of the, uh, uh, of the men who came back. And he came back with the job of restoring the word of God. That the word of God would be preached there and read in Jerusalem. But now we come to another man by the name of Zerbabel. Zerbabel was given the task of coming back to Jerusalem. And there to build a new temple. Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians had destroyed the original temple. And so, Zerbabel, then that was his task. But it comes to, to find out when you do the research that when the children of Israel came back under Zerbabel, that for two years they worked hard to build a temple. But then they quit working. And for 16 years, they had ceased working on the temple. So now Haggai comes into the picture. Haggai is a, a prophet that God sends to warn the people about the unfinished work of the temple. Now Zechariah was another prophet that came along with Haggai. I'm giving you this history so that you'll understand it. But Haggai was to tell the people what they needed to do then. Kind of like an evangelist does today. When you have a revival, evangelist comes in, and what is the task of the evangelist? He is to fire up the people and get them back to work. Now Zechariah, who came back with him, was one who preached about prophecy, those things that were yet to come, and you'll find those things in the book of, of Zechariah. So now we know the history. Zerubbabel was the governor, and he had let things slow down. And so when we look at our scripture this morning, with that in mind, let's begin reading in verse 1 of chapter 1. In the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, Haggai the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah. 
and to Joshua, the son of uh, Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, but the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie in waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. This gives us an introduction then to what we want to talk about today. Just like then there was unfinished work that needed to be done. But the people had got so busy doing other things that they had neglected the things of God. They had become to a point that they were more concerned about building their own temple, their own empire, instead of building God's empire and God's kingdom. And so he said to them, consider, consider the reasons why this work is unfinished. And so he began to talk about some of those things, but I want to ask us the question this morning. Will we not consider the reasons this morning why the, the unfinished work that is around us that's not being done? Just like back in Haggai's day, there was work to be done to build the temple, but they were not doing it. Just like today, there is work to be done, but people are not doing it. Now, what had happened? The people's heart had become faint. In other words, that means that it, it was not a part of the conscience of the people the need to build the temple for the Lord. Today, I'm afraid that we find our people a lot, a lot like the Jewish people. When people get saved, they get real excited about the Lord. They get real excited about what they can do for the Lord. But just like the, the Jewish people, after two years, suddenly their heart had become faint. And they lost conscious of what needed to be done. And their conscience was aroused to do what they wanted to do. And so today, the Lord's work is being neglected. And we must help these new converts to realize that their labor for the Lord lasts longer than two years. The labor for the Lord is forever and ever, no matter who we are. And we're to work for the Lord until it is time for us to go home and our work is finished. Today we're living in a time where that hearts are faint. And there's a reason for that. When we think about why do you think that the Jewish people's heart became faint when it came to building the temple? The same thing that we deal with today. They were, they were, they had enemies. They had enemies on the outside that was trying to stop the work on the temple. And their hearts grew faint and weak. From trying, from battling those that are on the outside. But also we find when you do the research that there was battles on the inside. And the people's heart grew faint from it. You know sometimes in the battle that we're in for the church today. For the work in the body of Christ. You know it's easy to get faint. It's easy to get weak. It's easy to decide well, let's just put it off. Now, now's not the time that we should be on fire for the Lord. Let's just let it rest a while. And that's what churches have done today. There is no fire in them to do God's work. They have grown faint. As a matter of fact, 
church people are the worst people that you can find to try to talk to about the Lord. They don't want to hear it. Why? Because their heart has grown faint and they're no longer doing the work that God has left them here to do. I'm telling you, we are in a battle from within and from without. But is our heart going to go grow faint? Are we going to become unconscious to the things that God wants us to do? Are we going to feel like that we're too weak that we can't do it? Can I just warn you here for just a moment as to what is coming so that your heart could be strengthened now and so that you'll be ready to fight the fight that is, that is coming toward us. As you know today, they're tearing down all the monuments that represents history in America. The ones that they're not tearing down, they're painting. They're making ugly marks on them. They want to destroy the history of America. Did you know that it's been mentioned now that even the monuments that represents the pilgrims that came here from Europe to establish Christianity here in America, they're wanting to destroy the pilgrims' monuments also. So when they do that, they will destroy our foundation. Because America was built upon the foundation of the pilgrims who came here and brought the word of God. And that's our history. And if they want to destroy the pilgrims' history, they want to destroy us. But are we ready for the fight? Or are we going to be faint? Are we going to lay around unconscious to what's going on around us? Haggai was trying to get the people to realize do the work of God. Consider the reasons why you're not doing the work of God. He says to us today, consider the reasons why you're not doing God's work. He found also that there was very little enthusiasm for the work. Why? Why was there no enthusiasm? Well, let's look and see what the Bible says. Verse 6. He said, you have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into bags with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. What is he saying? Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, said the Lord. You know what he's saying? He's saying here, you're trying to build for yourself. You're trying to build for yourself and what you want instead of considering the Lord's work. Many of us today are too busy doing what we want to do instead of doing what God wants us to do. We need to stop and consider the reasons why we're not actively working for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what Haggai was saying to them. Stop and consider the reasons why you're not building the temple. Why did they, was it so important that they build a temple? It was important because that's where God had told the people he'd meet them at. That was where they were to bring their sacrifices. That was where that they were to worship the Lord was in the temple. He said, I'll meet you there. But they had no interest. They had no enthusiasm. And God has told us when we would set aside time and come here and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what's wrong with us today? There's no enthusiasm to worship today. There's no enthusiasm to try to bring people in and build the kingdom of God. But there's all kinds of enthusiasm of going to a, a car lot and looking for a brand new car. There's all kinds of enthusiasm of going somewhere to build your fast, fine home. There's all kinds of enthusiasm to go to the mall to buy you some new clothes. But there's no enthusiasm to build on God's kingdom. Like I said, you've gone faint. 
There is no enthusiasm because you're building for yourself. You see, there's very little enthusiasm. And when that happens, what, what takes place? The remnant begins to get smaller. Do we not see that today? Can we not see that the remnant that, that loved Jesus and tried to do his work is growing smaller every day? It's growing smaller. And the workers there in the temple, it must have been down to just a handful that was trying to do it. The, the remnant is growing smaller. And if we, if we don't get some enthusiasm, and if we don't, if we don't get excited about the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what happens is going to happen? The remnant's going to get smaller and smaller. And the church is going to become weaker and weaker. Until one day, the church in America will be like the church in Spain. It'll be like the church in Europe. Meaningless. What is it they say in Spain? 0.4% are Christians. Not even 1%. Not even a half a is that where we want to go? Is that the testimony that the church wants to have? You see, the temple there in Jerusalem was a testimony to the Jewish people. And when the people that around them saw the temple, then, then they saw a place that God had promised to meet them at. It was a place where that forgiveness was found. It was a place where they could offer up prayers. That temple was a testimony to all the nations around Israel, around the Jewish people, there in Jerusalem, of a living God, a true God, a holy God. And they didn't want to build it. They didn't want to do that. Today I say to you, our remnant's getting smaller. If we don't get excited about Jesus, it's going to continue to decline. But let's look at this. It's time now that we consider what we are investing in. We delayed the unfinished work of God so that we could invest in something else. So let's look at this. Where are we investing in Let's look at the unfinished work we're leaving behind. Now look at what he said here. I thought this was interesting. He said, you have sown much in verse 6 and bring in little. You know what people are doing today? People are working themselves to death. But you're bringing in very little. I wonder why we had 182 families here to get, get food yesterday. I wonder why we gave away 10,000 pounds of food yesterday. Because people are working, but they're profiting very little from it. Notice something else he said. You have not enough to drink. And you're not filled. The workforce right now in America is that it, it's a it's a big it's at a high right now. But why is it that more and more people are on food stamps? Why is it that more and more people don't have the money to, to make ends meet? I can tell you why. They're sowing to the flesh. Instead of sowing for the Lord. They're sowing to the flesh instead of the Lord. Did you, did, do, do we not know that God can take a little and make a whole lot out of it? Do we not realize that? That God, we can take a little and God can make a whole lot out of it. But you know what? We'd rather do the other. 
We'd rather give God a little and invest in God a little bit and invest in ourselves a whole lot. And we're getting less of a return. We're, we're not profiting from what we're doing. Let me tell you something. If you're making $100 a week and you're on your knees before God and you're praying and, and you're seeking His face, I can tell you right now, He will take care of you. Then it might be through a food bank, but He will take care of you. But it's important that we invest where the blessings are instead of investing where there is no blessings. When the children of Israel first came into the land of Canaan, God was blessing them. But you know what God told them? He said, your blessings now have become a curse to you. And that's exactly what's happened to America today. Our, our blessings have now become a curse to us. Why? Because we have unfinished work with God. We're not investing with Him. Where are we investing? He says here that we're, we're investing, but we're losing ground. We're losing grounds today. You know what you're trying to do today? You're trying to keep up with your wants. And as long as you're trying to keep up with your wants, you're going to be on losing grounds. Why? Because you're never going to get all your wants. You're never going to get it all. You just keep wanting, because when you get one thing, you're going to want another. And you'll never be satisfied. God says, don't, don't leave the unfinished work of investing in Him, in our Lord Jesus Christ. You can find fulfillment. You can find a life that is satisfying when you have turned everything over to Him and you start investing in His. But He said they were losing ground here. Because look, look what He said. He said, you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none more. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages and puts it in a bag with what? With holes in it. Pretty clear, isn't it? We're losing ground. Now, let's stop and think. Haggai was telling them, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is lying in waste. That was the temple. That was, that was that was Jewish people's relationship with God was through the temple. He says it's lying in waste. What is he saying to us today? Our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is lying in waste. Why? Because we have too much unfinished work to do. Unfinished work for him. Now let's look at number three. First of all, consider the reasons and then consider your investments. Now let's, let's consider the spiritual work that we can think of today that I think is very, very important. He said in verse seven, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. I want you to think about this. What about your unfinished calling that you have? God has given every one of us that he has saved, he's given us a calling. It doesn't matter who we are. He didn't call you to do nothing. He gave you a calling. He gave you a, a gift. He gave you a work to do. Young people, let me say to you right now, is a time for you to understand your calling. Don't put it on delay. God has given you a spiritual calling and he wants you to, to finish it. Whatever it is, finish it. Why? If you don't, it will lie in waste. If, if you don't, you can't be like Paul. Paul said, I finished my course. I'm finished. He said, I'm done. Wouldn't I, all of you this morning, and young people, start with yourself now early. Wouldn't you like to be able to say that when it comes time for you to draw your last breath, that you can say, God, I did not. 
I did not delay my work for you. As I lay here ready to come into your presence, dear Father, I have no unfinished work. I have done what you've called me to do. That's what God wants us to be. And that's how God wants us to die. He wants every one of us to die as fulfilling the plan that he had called us to do. Not lay on our deathbed and look back and say, I should have done this, I should have done that. I wish I had been faithful to this. I wish I had been faithful to that. No, 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 God does not want that. Well, I'm a Haggai this morning. I'm trying to tell you, finish the work that God has called you. Don't let it be an unfinished calling. And you say, well, I'm, I'm old now. Let me tell you something. You aren't too old for God to use you. I don't care who you are. Don't you hide behind age. And if you've got a disability, don't hide behind your disability. God's left you here. He saved you and he's got a calling for you and be faithful to that calling. Don't let death come and there'll be an unfinished work in your life. You'll know it. That's why Paul there in prison could say, I finished my course. God, I've done everything you've told me to do. I've tried my best to follow you. But I'll tell you, that person that has not been faithful to God, that person that quit their Sunday school class, that person that quit their deaconship, that person that quit preaching, that person that did those things, quit those things that God called them to do, when they're laying on their deathbed, they'll know, they'll lay there, and they'll grieve because they're dying with an unfinished calling. Must consider the spiritual work. The unfinished temple. The unfinished temple. We know what that temple represented. I've told you that. And it represented their relationship with the Lord. But what about our unfinished temple? This is the temple. Did you know that? It may not look much to you, but it's a temple. And it's a precious temple. It's an important temple. Why? Jesus lives in it. He lives inside me. What am I doing to this temple? What did God tell us in Romans Romans 8, I believe it's 28, 29, 29 I believe it is. He says that we are predestined to be conformed into the image of Christ. Does this image look like Christ? Does the image that you live when people look at you, does it look like Christ? Have you quit the work of allowing God to conform your image to look like Christ? Have you quit? Is there unfinished work to do? Let me ask you something. The sins of this world today, the drugs, the alcohol, the adultery, the lying, cheating. Does that look like the image of Christ? Let me just ask you a question, and I don't usually mention this, but I'm a, I just want to mention this this morning. For some reason, it's on my mind. When that offering plate passed by this morning, did you steal from God? Hmm? Did you steal from Him? If you stole from Him this morning, does that look like the image of Christ?
Wat die Malka aan sê? He said, will they rob me? He said, yes, they'll rob me with my tithes and offering. They'll rob from God. There's people here was robbing themselves of an opportunity to worship and do something for God. They were robbing to satisfy themselves. If you're taking money from God to buy something for yourself, you know what you've done? You've robbed from God to go buy an idol. An idol, yeah. If you bought an idol instead of giving it to God, then that means that that idol means more important than God does to you. I don't apologize for telling you the truth this morning. This unfinished calling, this unfinished temple that we got, this temple here has got to be one that when people see us, they see Jesus in us. They see a Jesus life in us, not a hypocrite. Not one that says one thing and does another. Not that steals from God his time. People this morning, they don't even think about coming to the house of God to worship this morning. Stealing worship time from God. Out having fun. Out doing the things that the flesh wants to do. That does not look like Christ. And yet, yet today people say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. And people look at them and say, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. Why? Because I don't see it, I don't see it. Do we not believe that Christianity can be seen in our life? Yes, it can be seen. But last of all, the unfinished body of Christ. The unfinished work right here. The unfinished calling upon our life. The unfinished temple that we are. This unfinished body of believers here today. Now you might take this lightly. But you better not take it lightly. When you've been given something by God. And you've accepted it in God's name. You better not back out on it. It's unfinished work. We don't, don't think too much about it, do we? Since I've been here in 13 years, we've had four deacons walk out of this church and leave unfinished work. Did you know when they were ordained in this church, they were ordained to be a deacons to this body of believers. They were ordained to do the work here. There's four of them I know has walked away from it. Unfinished work. Now let me tell you something about this unfinished work. You can't leave this unfinished work here in the house of believers that you say God called you to unless God releases you. And if you do and you go somewhere else and try to do the work, you're committing sin because you left unfinished work where you were at. Now you might not believe that, but I'll tell you right now, you better check up on the and, and read the demands that God has on our life. You see, people just quit their jobs today as if it's nothing. Well, I don't bother me. I just quit. I just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfinished work. I told Alvin the other day, the thing that haunts me the most today... Is having to step down from pastor of a church. That brings more to haunt my life than anything else that I'm dealing with today. You know why? Because I love the work. 
And I don't want to ever walk away from a pulpit with unfinished work that God has for me. And God help me that I won't do it. But you know what? If we get to looking at the flesh, we will. But I want to tell you this morning, God has got to work for all of you. Are you allowing it to go unfinished? Or are you willing to stand and work for Christ till Jesus comes, whether it be by death or whether it be by the rapture? I'll tell you what I want more than anything. is when I meet Jesus and he says to me, Welcome home, my faithful servant. Welcome home, my, my faithful child. You have finished your course. Now, henceforth, is laid up for you a crown of righteousness. Oh, that's the words I want to hear. I don't want nobody. I don't want to hear those words. You're a new me in air. I want to hear those words from Jesus Christ when he welcomes me home. Don't leave unfinished work done here. Can I just read this scripture to you? Here's what's happened to most people. Can I see now? Get what it said. Look in verse 9. You look for much, and lo, it came too little. And when you brought it home, I blew upon it. You ever thought about what you bring home? It's never enough. You ever bring home? You don't have enough money to pay the bills. You worked hard. You brought it home. But there wasn't enough there. God said, if you've got unfinished work that you haven't done, he said, I'll blow on it. That's the reason it don't have enough. I blow on it. I blow it away. Why? Because you've got unfinished work that you need to be doing. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is a waste. And you ruin every man, you run every man unto his own house. I say to you this morning, he w- listen to me, I will tell you what's going to happen to you, all of you that don't want to get it right. I know I'm running over it. That's nothing unusual. But, but listen to what he said. Here's what's going to happen to you. Verse 10. There are for the heavens over you. It stayed from dew. You know what God is saying there? If you've got unfinished work, go ahead. Just go ahead and live for yourself. But you'll not get nothing refreshing from me. There will not be no water refreshment for me. I'll not bless what you do. And the earth... It stayed from her fruits. In other words, he's saying, you won't get no fruits from it either. Is that what kind of life we want to live? A life that trying to finish our work instead of finish God's work and think that God's going to let dew fall on it and, and refresh it and think that, that God is going to bring fruit from it. No, it's not going to happen. He said in verse 11, And I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the land. You know where the church is at today? You know where your Christian life is at today for most people? You're in a drought. You're in a drought. This morning is an invitation. You come fall on your face before the Lord. And you say, Lord, I want to finish them. I want to continue the unfinished work, the unfinished calling on my life. Whatever you want me to do, I want to do it. Why? Because I want the dew to fall to heaven. I want the dew to fall from heaven to be upon the work that I'm trying to do. 
And I want the work that I'm trying to do. I want it to be fruitful. I want the fruit to come from it. Will you come and just bow on your head, hands and knees before God? Don't let, get out of this drought that we're in. We're in a drought. You see, you know how I know? Because I know that most of you, bless your heart, I love you, but most of you are going to leave here this morning and you're going to go home and the only thing you're going to worry about is yourself. You're not going to worry about your children, your grandchildren. You're not going to worry about your neighbor. You're not going to worry about nobody else. You don't care whether they go to hell or not. Just as long as you get home and get your belly full and get in the recliner and go to sleep. That's where we're at, isn't it? We don't care. You're a spiritual drought. Come and ask God to do a work in your life, will you? Will you? Let's all stand. Haggai's mission was to hearken the people. What does that mean?